Okay, after analyzing and finding out these things from our Druda model, now let's move on to an improved model. So, how do we improve the model? We follow the suggestions by Sommerfeld and move on to the Sommerfeld theory for metals. So, at Druda's time and also a lot more, uh, uh, a lot later, it was considered to be quite acceptable that you apply kinetic theory of gases for electrons. That means you treat the electrons using Maxwell Boltzmann statistics. But Maxwell Boltzmann statistics is not really valid for electrons because electrons are identical particles. And in the context of quantum statistics, you have learned that identical particles are like when their uh, wave functions overlap and then they can separate again in such a way that they cannot re retain their identity. You won't be able to distinguish them at all, no matter how well you can resolve it. So. Electrons are identical particles, that means indistinguishable particles, they obey Fermi Dirac statistics and Maxwell Boltzmann statistics is not applicable on them in a strict sense. Also, you have Pauli exclusion principle that is obeyed by every fermion and electrons are fermions, so that principle is obeyed. So, you have to consider these things while treating electrons in a metal. Druda did not consider that because these things, these theory didn't exist at his time. Now, if we consider all these things, then if we consider Maxwell Boltzmann statistics, then the velocity distribution coming from the Boltzmann distribution that is given as this is the Boltzmann velocity function. This is n is the number density times mass over twice pi kb is the Boltzmann constant times temperature. This power 3 over 2 e power minus mv squared over twice kb t. This is the Maxwell Boltzmann velocity distribution function. But this function is not applicable because we need to apply Fermi Dirac statistics on this. Sommerfeld also applied Pauli exclusion principle and if now we consider these two things, we can find the ground state properties of the electronic gas, electron gas. So, after considering the Fermi Dirac statistics and Pauli exclusion principle, we assume that the electrons do not interact with one another. Why do we consider that? Well, electrons do not interact with one another. That's uh, a requirement for free electron, but that's not actually true. This is something we assume because that makes our work much simpler. And let's start with something simple. Later on, we will try to move on towards more complicated stuff. So this is called the independent electron approximation. Uh, 
a single electron can be descri described by its wave function psi which is a function of its position. Now, if the electron has no interaction with uh, the other electrons in the system, the time independent Schrodinger equation for that electron that can be written as minus h cross squared over twice m del square psi r. It has no interaction with other electrons as well as the nucleus as was considered in Druder's approximations and that is also here. So, the Hamiltonian is just the kinetic energy. So, Hamiltonian operator kinetic energy operator is minus h, h cross square over twice m del square and that acts on the psi the wave function of the electron to give us epsilon psi where epsilon is the energy eigenvalue. Now, we shall represent the confinement of the electrons to the volume by some boundary condition for solving this Schrodinger equation. What kind of boundary conditions should we consider? We can consider that the solid is of a shape of a cube. Why cube? Because this is the simplest kind of a shape that we can work with. Anything away from cube would make situations a bit more complicated. And that means it has each side L and L is cube root of the volume of this cube. And now we need a boundary condition. Shall we consider that outside this cube there is no electron that means there is no wave function the wave function on the surface of the cube goes to 0. If we consider that kind of a boundary condition then you can readily see that the electronic wave functions within the material within the cube that is going to be stationary waves subject to this boundary condition. But uh, we are interested in transport properties electrical transport as well as therm thermal transport and transport properties that means electrons are moving that would be better represented by non-stationary that is running waves. So, bound, the wave function going to zero at the boundary is not really suitable. Then what kind of boundary condition do we take, do we assume here? Well, periodic boundary conditions may be better. What does periodic boundary condition mean? Let us assume we have this kind of a box. It is a cube, not a square. If we have this kind of a situation, then if an electron goes out from this surface at the same time we assume that it enters from this other kind of a surface. So, it is a periodic arrangement of this box everywhere in the space that kind of a boundary condition we would impose. How do we impose this boundary condition in terms of mathematics on the wave function? So, in one dimension it would mean that if you have psi x plus capital L, capital L is the side of the cube, it would be equal to psi x. This is the boundary condition and if we go for three dimension, it would be psi x y z plus L equals psi x y 
z psi x y plus l z equals psi x y z psi x plus l y z equals psi x y z this is also called born von common boundary condition or simply periodic boundary condition okay after learning this periodic boundary condition we now solve the schrodinger equation subject to the boundary condition the trial solution would be psi as a function of k and r where k is the index is given as 1 over square root of v which is the normalization condition within this box within this cube e power i k dot r which is a plane wave solution and it will have an energy epsilon k given as h cross squared k squared over twice m so here k is a position independent vector it is the wave vector and now let's try to see the significance of this k if we have this kind this form of the wave function then this form that is the plane wave form of this wave function it is also an eigenstate of the momentum operator it is of course an eigenstate of the hamiltonian also an eigenstate of the momentum operator and if it is an eigenstate of the momentum operator the momentum operator can be written as h cross over i del del r which is h cross over i gradient and when this kind of a momentum operator acts on the wave function that means the plane waveform we get the eigenvalue that is h cross k this is the eigenvalue of the momentum operator that means h cross over i gradient acting on e power i k dot r is nothing but h cross k e power i k dot r so we can now interpret k as a wave vector and the corresponding the Broglie wavelength lambda that would be given as twice pi over the magnitude of k for the electron if we now invoke the periodic boundary condition then this uh, allows only certain discrete values of k that would satisfy the condition and what discrete values if we have e power i k x l equals e power i k y l equals e power i k z l equals 1 only then 
the boundary condition would be satisfied not otherwise that means we don't have the continuous values of k accessible anymore only certain discrete values are allowed if we have e power z equals 1 that means z equals twice pi i n where n is an integer the components of k then must be take the form k x equals twice pi n x over l k y equals twice pi n y over l k z equals twice pi n z over l where n x n y n z these are integers now if we consider a region of the k space and if it has a volume omega then this volume will contain omega over twice pi over l cubed this number of k points so this simplifies to omega v over 8 pi cubed so this is the number of k values other values are not allowed anymore subject to the periodic boundary condition that we have considered in other words the number of allowed k values per unit volume of the k space 